So Formula E is finally back for its fifth season after four years and four champions. We look to a brand new year and a brand new era of Formula E as the Gen 2 car comes into action here with the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. So in today's video, we're going to quickly look at this race and give my opinions on it, my thoughts on the Gen 2 cars and just an overall discussion of this brand new season. So I'm really lucky that I've sort of partnered with Formula E and I'm going to be able to show you a couple of the key highlights highlights from the race in this video right now it does mean I'm not able to monetize the video but that doesn't really matter to me as long as I can get you guys some exclusive content that's cool with me so you'll be seeing throughout this video four or five clips from the EPRI earlier today and we're going to start off here with the race start so Antonio Felix da Costa started on pole position after they had issues in qualifying they had to do a different qualifying format after there was rain it caused massive disruption and they hardly had any laps so they went into qualifying Da Costa set the fastest lap time there in the first session. He was quite far ahead of a lot of people, to be fair. He had a really good qualifying lap, putting him quite far ahead of the rest of the field. He started on pole position, and as you'll see, he kind of messed up his starting position on his grid slot. He wasn't really lining straight down to turn one. He was sort of pointed towards the pit wall, which was a bit unfortunate for him. But uh, as you'll see, the start didn't go too badly for him, and he led down to the first corner. So here we are. Here is the clip from the run down to turn one. Antonio Felix da Costa is on pole position in his wonky BMW. Jose Maria Lopez alongside him in the Dragon. Then it's Buemi and Van Dorn behind. Here come the lights. 2018-19 Formula E begins now. There's definitely a jump start in the middle there. Can Antonio Felix da Costa hold the lead? Yes, because it's not a good start from Jose Maria Lopez. Sebastian Buemi in the silver Nissan goes to the outside and gets through into second place, does he? Yes, he did. Um, that's where the clip ended. Um, but yeah, Boyomi did get into second place out of the first couple of corners and he managed to jump ahead of Jose Maria Lopez who didn't get the best start of the uh, race from the dirtier side of the grid. John O'Brien also had a decent start. He was up to fourth place as well. And uh, the majority of the top 10 was pretty similar. Van Dorn didn't have a fantastic start, uh, but the majority of the top 10 stayed in that order. But unfortunately for Eduardo Montara, he really had a tough start to this race. As we saw Da Costa, Boyomi Lopez out front your top three unfortunately once again Mortara was having issues with his brakes by the looks of it uh, the Venturi team really struggling with that throughout the whole weekend he'd already had a crash in one of the I think the free practice sessions or the qualifying session Mortara and it's really gutting for him because we all know what a talented driver he is he is totally deserving of some good results but the Venturi car this season doesn't look like it's quite there we we know they've provided some really good cars in the past but Right now, the Venturi doesn't quite look like it's going to be able to, to win races this year. It looks a bit too far off. And that was kind of the case for HWA as well. But we'll show you more Tara's crash, and then we'll get on to discussing HWA, who uh, did struggle somewhat in this race. Because it went up on the timing screens, but the drivers were not informed. Watch Eduardo Mortara here in the silver car. Yeah, he just plows into the, into the wall. And the rear Marked wheels up. were still going. Yeah, sorry, we saw that. So that big, big moment all but ended Mortara's race. He did continue lapping around, but of course, after he'd come into the pits to change his front wing, that was it. That was unfortunately, you know, with no change with the cars anymore, it meant that his race was over, unfortunately, and that was just uh, the case, and he was a lap down, and that was that. And uh, as the race continued, De Costa continued to lead the race, but Buemi did start to struggle, as did the HWA cars. So the HWA cars really started uh, plummeting down the order. We saw the wet conditions obviously helping them out a little bit uh, in terms of, you know, fighting towards the front a bit more, but I was a bit gutted for HWA because obviously a, a lineup of Van Dorn and two-time DTM champion Gary path is a very very strong lineup and they were just plummeting down the field they both have decent starting positions on the grid I think Van Dorn was the fourth or fifth on the grid, and I think uh, I think Paffitt started ninth after all of the, the disqualifications after qualifying. So they were starting decent up the grid, but unfortunately for them, they really just couldn't keep that going, and they, they really, really struggled. So HWA have a lot of development over the next couple of uh, weeks ahead of them if they want to be competitive. Right now, them and Neo probably seem to be the worst two teams on the grid, which is unfortunate, but of course there always needs to be someone at the back of the grid. But overall this year, the whole pack does seem quite close, but the Cheetah are probably the ones that we want to focus on at some point in this video because they were very quick, and I was uh, kind of surprised at the, the pace they had you know, towards the end of the race, second half of the race, they were lightning quick. 
So as the race went on, we kind of thought that De Costa had this one in the bag. I mean, minutes after minutes were going, and it was like, okay, he's he's probably going to win this one. He's got a nice little lead, you know, it's building and building and building, and there wasn't really that much of a threat behind. Buemi was kind of holding up the cars behind, and Vern at this point hadn't really got behind. But as soon as Vern got past Buemi, we thought, ooh, this is going to get interesting now. This is going to get interesting, because Vern really was quick he really really was quick both cheat cars were quick and once they both got past Buemi they started hunting down the race leader Antonio Felix da Costa and at the same time you always got to be thinking about this new sort of boost system they've got engaged here where you go wide on the corner or you sort of tuck into a certain corner and you get an extra bit of boost it's something very unique to Formula E something that they've tried to do to you know enhance the drama because now that the car can do the whole race there's less opportunity for something crazy to happen in the pit lane so they've introduced this attack mode so you went tight into one of the last couple of corners and you got a boost of four minutes two times in the race so a bit like Kurz constantly for four minutes twice a race which was really interesting in addition to that of course five people get fan boost as well including De Costa he got the fan boost and neither neither of the cheetah cars oh, why do I keep messing up that to cheetah cars neither of the cheetah cars had fan boost in this race which did definitely help De Costa and the fact that the cars can go the whole race now means there's less less issues with power saving and all that sort of stuff there's a huge huge difference between the gen 1 and the gen 2 cars the gen 2 cars are much quicker and they have much better batteries meaning they can last the whole race and push for a much more significant amount of time so these cheat cars were flying through the field they were going at an you know, un unbelievable speed they were just going so much quicker than the rest and after you feel uh, sorry Felix Rogan the Rosenquist had a bit of a moment and he was out of the, the race as well he had to pull off to the side of the track we saw these to cheat what do I keep messing up to cheat cars it's not that hard acts to cheat cars once they were flying through the field they started to catch up with the cost with about half an hour to go it looked very very likely they were going to take the lead this race and it it was the case Vern managed to get the over take done on Felix da Costa and take the lead of this one then not that far after that happened something pretty remarkable happened both Vern and Lotterer got a drive-through penalty for technical infringements and other people down the field got these as well including Alexander Sims he got one as well including a couple of other people I think towards the back of the field as well they got drive through penalties for infringements so a massive massive blow for the cheetah team who once they got these penalties were first and third on the road Vern was first Lotter was in third just behind De Costa and we thought that in all honesty the cheetah car was probably the best car on the grid and both their guys were right at the front and Lotter looked very likely to get past De Costa but then they got these penalties and it, it was really really gutting because we thought we were going to see a nice little battle between two, two teammates Lotter and Vern. I thought we were going to see a, a sort of a battle for those two for the victory but unfortunately we didn't as both of them had to come in for their drive through penalty and whilst this was all going on the attack mode was getting quite you know used very strategically through the field. People were doing a good job at using it at the right time to ensure that they got past people and you know little things like Oliver Rowland he had a really good race to be fair to him in his uh, rookie race he did a fantastic job to to use everything right use the the you know this attack mode to perfection really in the, the timing of the safety car later which we'll talk about it all worked out in his favor and he actually ended up with a really good result Another battle that really intrigued me throughout this race was the Lopez, D'Ambrosio and Buemi battle. They were scrapping around for fourth place on the road. Meanwhile, here comes Lopez again, trying to get past Sebastian Buemi. Again, going to the outside. Oh, this is going to be quite the move. They, they have a little bit of a rub, but I think that'll just about stick for Lopez. And there goes D'Ambrosio, sees his opportunity. Oh, is he going to pass him into the last corner? <laughs> before Vern and Lotterer had to come to the pits which obviously made that the battle for P2 and actually Vern slotted in around that sort of battle as well that's how far ahead Vern was he slotted in just behind that battle for the net second place in the race after all of the penalties uh, Buemi he did struggle in this race somewhat the e dams doesn't seem quite as dominant as it was especially in uh, the 15-16 season and the the four well, you know to be fair the first two or three seasons e dams are right at the front and last year and this year 
not quite as close to the front as we expect. I mean, Buemi is definitely out driving that car, as he always does. Buemi undoubtedly is one of the best drivers in Formula E, and yeah, he did start to struggle, and he didn't get very lucky with the timing of everything as well. It all sort of played against him, but Buemi had an average race, but I think he scored some good enough points. And uh, a funny thing that happened a couple of times, actually, in the race was that... Yeah, a bit of a shame for Jose Maria Lopez. He went to use the attack mode twice, and he missed it on two occasions, which was gutting for him. So he lost a lot of time on two occasions trying to use the attack mode, and it didn't work out for him because he didn't get the car in the right place on the track. But it did go from bad to worse to Lopez, as a couple of laps later, he had issues with the car. Whether he hit the wall slightly, or whether it was just a failure with one of the rear parts of the car, of the suspension, it meant that his rear left of his car was sort of destroyed, and he couldn't continue, which brought out a safety car, and that that really enlivened the last couple of laps of the race. But let's show you the accident where unfortunately Lopez retired from the race. Pretty close. Oh, he's close enough, Jack. There they come. And oh, there's a slow car. Dragon hit the wall. I, think, the it was, I think it's Lopez. Yep. I think Jose Maria Lopez has got damage to his left rear. And that is the end of what started as such a promising race for Lopez. So the following safety car made a crazy dash to the end of this one. So it took quite a long time to get rid of the Lopez car at the side of the track, but it did leave for an interesting two or three minutes to finish the race off. I mean, I think we all wish that there was a little bit more racing because it would have been a bit interesting to see whether Verne did manage to get past, but a lot of people decided to use the attack mode as they were coming to the end of the safety car. So a lot of people dived for the attack mode whilst they were still in the safety car as it was coming in, which meant about half the field were using this extra boost for the last three minutes of the race. So each boost gives you four minutes so they were basically on the boost for the rest of the race uh, apart from the last half sort of half lap of the, the last lap but nonetheless it was a really exciting end to the race and da costa had a bit of a buffer initially because d'ambrosio was between himself and Vern, but d'ambrosio didn't have this extra boost which meant Vern got past him pretty quickly and evans also having a pretty good race in the jaguar team as well definitely seeming to be the number one driver in the team this year after a bit of a, an unfortunate turn of events for pico which left him outside the points for the majority of the race but an intriguing last couple of laps as Verne got past D'Ambrosio and hunted down to Costa for the win of the race but unfortunately for him he didn't do it but great for me great for all the De Costa fans out there Antonio Felix De Costa won the first race of the season the first race in the Gen 2 cars and this is as they came across the start finish line to finish the race into the final turn of the Adiria E Prix and it's victory for Da Costa and BMW. Da Costa's second victory in Formula E, the first for BMW and Andretti from pole position. What a wonderful race, what a wonderful drive. Vern in second, D'Ambrosio third in the end, a great performance from him. So, as a DaCosta fan, I was absolutely buzzing for him to get another victory. His first came in Season 1, so it's been a long wait for us fans to get a victory from him. But he did a fantastic job, and yes, he did get somewhat lucky with Vern's mishap with the, uh, the infringement, but at the end of the day, he didn't bottle it under the pressure. I mean, it would have been very easy for him to, to make a mistake on those last couple of corners. We saw how close Vern got. If you go and watch back the race again, it's on YouTube, how close... Vern got to hit in the back of DaCosta in that last lap of the race was kind of insane but a great race from DaCosta he won it ahead of Vern D'Ambrosio with a fantastic podium on his debut for the Mahindra team he should be very happy with that uh, a great result for him and the Mahindra team who struggled with the Rosenquist car all weekend but I'd say a great result for, for D'Ambrosio I don't think he would have expected that on his debut for a brand new team and uh, yeah so then the rest of the top 10 looked as this Evans finished fourth on a great race for him in Jaguar. Lotterer, Buemi, Roland, a great first race in the series or first time back for him. He did one race before. And then eighth place was Apt, ninth place was Degrassi, tenth was PK. And the rest of the running order was as followed. Frins, Bird, uh, sorry, other way around. Bird, Frins, Turley, Massa, Dillman, Gunther, Van Dorn, Sims, and Mortara. And the retirees of the race, Lopez, Paffitt, and Rosenquist. But a fantastic first race of the season. Formula E is well and truly back. And I'm super excited to see how the rest of the season goes. 
So overall, I think we've got to say a great race from De Costa, even though, as we said, he got a little bit lucky. You need luck in motorsport to uh, to grab those victories, and I think it was going to be him or Verne winning this race nonetheless. And I'm happy as a fan of De Costa it was him, and we haven't seen much success from De Costa. He's been in a car towards the back of the grid over the past year, so finally he's got a decent car underneath him. He's going for those victories, and he's got one to start the Gen 2 era. Other notable people, as we've already said, Verne and D'Ambrosio, both great on their return to the podium in Gen 2. Uh, Lotta was also very quick throughout this race as well. I feel he probably could have challenged Vern if he didn't get stuck behind more traffic after doing his drive-through penalty. Roland, big shout out to him uh, for his first time as we said back in the Gen 2 car with little notice after Albon going to Formula 1. I think that's a really great result for Roland finishing just behind his champion teammate Boemi. And I think Boemi is probably the most successful driver in Formula E up to my head. I think he is. Uh, the Audi cars struggled somewhat. All of the Audi powered cars really struggled in this race, to be fair. Apton, Degrassi 8 and 9, and uh, Bird and Friends 11 and 12. That wasn't a great race for the Audi power trained cars. And yeah, Massa struggled, as did really the whole Venturi team with Mortara having an accident. And HWA, as we said already, they probably are the slowest team on the grid right now, which sucks uh, for Van Dorn, obviously, going from Formula 1, where he was struggling somewhat, and uh, he's coming to now in Formula E, and he's still struggling. But HWA definitely have the potential over the next half of the season to produce a car that's up there battling for podiums and victories. That's the great thing about Formula E, where you don't get in many other racing series teams can legitimately battle their way through the field over a season. We saw it with Audi last year. They came from you know, mid-table the start of last year to being the best car on the grid by the end of last year. And we can see that once again. We could probably see HWA battle their way through the field and become one of the better teams. That's just because Formula E is so great. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you want to see more of these in the future. Massive thank you for Formula E for sort of shouting me or giving me an email. And wanting to do this sort of collaboration. I think they're doing this with quite a lot of other media people as well. So it's a really awesome opportunity. I'm uh, hopefully going to do more of these in the future. After every race I'd love to do one. And to let me know if you'd like to see more in the future. But yeah. Hopefully enjoyed the race footage. As I said, not monetized at all. I'm not allowed to do that. So uh, that means you don't get to see any adverts, which I guess is good for you guys. Uh, but yeah, hopefully enjoyed it. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And uh, be sure to check out all the Formula E content coming on the channel. It's been Alex Mardi. Goodbye.